Welcome back to the Berlin Marathon Build in Kenya. This is episode four, and in this episode, we're going to run you through what the diet looks like for Kenyan athletes based here in Iten. We're going to start at a local cafe, and we're going to show you what our lunches look like at a local cafe before we chat to a 207 marathoner, a local Kenyan athlete, before we then go through the weekly recap of training. Okay, so this is a very classic dish. Um, I asked for a few different things, but th this particular cafe, um, which is really normal in Kenya actually, didn't have exactly what I asked for, but more or less most of it. Um, so yeah, this is a very, there's a lot of variety in this plate. Angus is gonna give me a hand because a couple of these things on this plate I actually haven't, um, or at least I don't have regularly. So we've got ugali here, which is obviously one of the most famous um, staples of the Kenyan diet. Pretty much just pure carbs made from maize. Yeah. Flour, yeah. Uh, we've got peas, we've got carrots, we have lentils, we have chapati, which is more of an Indian, um, you know, originally from India, but it's just basically bread. Uh, we have cabbage, we have skooma, of which mm -hmm. oh, we have more food coming here. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have skooma, which is? It's just a, it's like a green, a leafy green. Leafy green, probably yeah. most similar to spinach. Um, very high in iron, I believe. We'll, we'll cross check that. And this is a type of corn. Is that right? Yeah, so this they call uh, gideri, which is a mixture of beans and and just the same corn that they use to make um, to make the ugali, but not not ground up. What have you got in your plate? <clears throat> I've got so Matt's got like sort of a plate that's a mix match of a whole bunch of things, but in general, Kenyans would eat a more simple meal that's got maybe two two maybe three ingredients um so this would be a, quite a well-off kenyan would order ugali with nyama meat and cabbage is a pretty staple yeah and the best one of my favorite things about ugali is that it's eaten sort of with the hand so instead of using knife and fork you mash it up with your thumb big ugali fight yeah <laughs> and you then use that to pick up your food and eat and yeah most Kenyans would have ugali in the evenings, I think. Um, it's more of like an evening meal. And they say that it, it sits well in the stomach and fuels you through your morning run the next day as well. Most Kenyans will run the morning run fasted. Um, and, and ugali is the perfect meal to have the night before a fasted run the next day. Whereas rice is more of a lunchtime meal. And chapati is classic breakfast time, um, normally eaten with beans, maybe egg. Yeah, we're pretty much covering a large percentage of the Kenyan diet in these two plates here. Uh, my name is Dennis Kipnyano, Chirchir, uh, Kenyan professional elite marathoner. Uh, my best times are 2 hours 7 minutes 17 from Hanover. Chapati is it's made from wheat, so it has like uh, carbohydrates content. And that's what all the athletes need. You need carbohydrates, especially for endurance athletes. Uh, managu is traditional uh, bitter leaves. I think in English it's called uh, African nightshade. It's very nutritious. It's, and that's why most Kenyan athletes love that for dinner and sometimes lunch, but mostly dinner. I think the sour milk mursik, it's a probiotic. So that's definitely what most Kenyans are taking. Okay. Fermented milk, yeah. It's good for the stomach and if your stomach has good bacteria, it's easy to absorb all the nutrients from food. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. You did a very big workout yesterday, easy yeah. run today. Yeah. What would you normally eat mm -hmm. for lunch yeah. on a weekday like this, in the middle of the day? What did you order from, uh, from Lily's today? Depends. Mostly, I usually have a, this is Kenyan standard meal for the athletes. Mostly, uh, it's called gideri and it consists of beans and maize and some bit of vegetables. Sometimes uh, you top it up with avocado or chapati. Yeah, so it's basically carbohydrates and uh, proteins yep. and veggies, so it's balanced. What would a normal breakfast look like for you? And also I'm curious to know, would you eat breakfast before you run or after you run? Would you eat something small before you run? What would the morning look like? Okay. But on most occasion, I, can, uh, I think I can say 90% of the athletes run on an empty stomach for sure. Yeah. Yesterday morning, yeah. you had your <clears throat> your five times five K. Yeah. Did you eat anything before that? No. Would most Kenyans have eaten before no, that? No, no. Yesterday I didn't. Uh, I didn't take anything. Yeah. 
How soon after training will you normally eat? Is it important that you eat in a short period of time after training? And what would you normally eat after training in the morning for breakfast? I usually take a whey protein and then as uh, we come back to our to ten or to our houses and then after we take I take tea and chapati or tea and bread and a banana. Yeah. Sometimes when the session is too intense, I don't feel like eating but I just have to fall. Sometimes I sleep for another two hours and then sleep after. Yeah. 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 You mentioned protein after training. Mm -hmm. Some do you think all athletes do that or only some? No, 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 not not all of them. It's to buy it, it's very expensive. Yeah. So not all of them can afford to buy the whey protein. So no. Yeah. So that's breakfast and lunch covered. What would the rest of the day look like? Would you snack? And after that we can talk about the dinner, what would you normally eat? Yeah, but not so much. Maybe just a banana, <laughs> slice of uh, maybe a bun or maybe bread also and some uh, peanut butter and that's it yeah or maybe a drink some favorite for the athletes Rabina yeah Rabina yeah. yeah do you believe Ugali is some people believe it's a secret recipe for running of course I think some people also think that's quite a uh, interesting idea yeah do you think there's anything unique about it or do you think it's just quite a similar alternative to say rice or pasta Ah, uh, yeah, yes, quite similar to rice and pasta. It's it's just because it's the food that it's a stable food that we were born and raised eating. Yes, and it's yeah, it's more a preference, but okay. it's just alternative to rice and, and spaghetti thing. Yeah. yeah. Do you or do you think anyone that trains in Kenya that is local mm -hmm. pays attention to calories and how many calories they are having? No. Do you think anyone understands this? No. 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 You just basically eat to your your hunger. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was really good. Spoke to Anytime. You. This video series is sponsored by Saw Running, my favorite running apparel brand based out of the UK. You'll see everything I wear in this video series to be Saw Running. They produce the best singlets and the best tights and marathon shorts in the game. Top for Running, one of Europe's fastest growing running retail stores that stock all the top brands, all the latest models at the lowest prices. You can see them at the Berlin Marathon. They'll have a booth at the Expo. If you're looking for a new pair of races or trainers, do not look past Top for Running and use the code SWEATELITE at checkout to score the lowest possible price. You can find the link in the description of this video. Precision Fuel and Hydration, look no further for the highest quality electrolytes, carbohydrate drink mix and gels on the market. The caffeine gel is my absolute favorite and you can use the code SWEATELITE-YT for YouTube, 15% off your order at Precision Fuel and Hydration. Pillar Performance, a sports micronutrition company that I've been working with for quite some time that create the triple magnesium blend that has really improved my sleep. You can use the code SWEAT15 for 15% off your first order. HVMN's Ketone IQ, a relatively new supplement used by many of the world's best endurance athletes, such as Sarah Hall, Cameron Worth, and others. You can use the code SWEATELITE to score a 20% off discount at checkout over at HVMN, and you can experience the magic of ketones yourself. So I think the biggest thing that I've seen is everything is very simple, very regimented, and very repetitive. So these athletes for the most part obviously there's some individual variability but almost everyone is eating the same breakfast post-run lunch dinner day in day out so on and so forth just around the clock just like they train consistently um, they eat consistently so uh, from what i've seen usually if they have something before a run it'll be light like a piece of bread um, maybe some honey or sugar with it, um, just very light. Um, maybe if it's a big workout, they'll have a little more sugar or something, um, but usually before a run, it's pretty light. Afterwards, they'll almost always have their Kenyan tea, so that's a mix of, I'd say, water, milk, sugar, and then they'll add more sugar. So. That's their kind of post-run recovery, get a lot of sugar in real quick. Um, maybe they have chapati or more bread with that. And if they're in a camp, they might have a, a breakfast meal served to them right after their run. If not, they might just nap after their tea and then eat lunch, um, which is usually rice, potatoes, a little bit more wholesome food um, in the afternoon. Um, 
they'll usually have some milk um, to get their protein. Um, there's not a ton of meat for the most part just because it's more expensive um, and a bit more of a process to get you know, good quality meat here. So um, usually they're getting their protein through milk and then the, the milk that's in the tea um, and beans um, and even the ugali that they eat, the corn flour is a decently high proportion of protein. So they're getting their protein just in bits and pieces rather than a big hunk of meat. Um, but they get, I'd say, enough. You know, it's not high protein, but they're getting enough. And then it's just carbs, carbs, carbs in the form of ugali, rice, potatoes, plain, never any sauce. You know, it's, they have simple tastes and they keep it simple. More or less every time I come to Kenya, I'm almost always here for about the same period of time, four weeks, although this time it's going to be closer to seven weeks. But in those four weeks that I've been here for now, I almost always lose about three to four kilos, which is interesting. It's probably almost eight to 10 pounds. And it might be something to do with the diet. It might also be something to do with burning more calories when you're at altitude. But obviously the diet's got something to do with it. So it's just an interesting point to note. And I do know not everyone experiences the same thing, but at least Eric has shared that he's lost a few kilos more than he would have thought. So um, I think that is almost a little side benefit to the diet here. I think just the amount of sort of calories that are in it, um, you know, divided by the amount of grams you're consuming is, um, is, is helpful for, for just at least shedding some extra fat because I'm a bit of a heavy runner. So it, it is important for someone like me. But onto the week of training. That was the fourth week of training up here in Kenya. And we're now four weeks to go until five weeks to go. That is this week that I'm just recapping now. So I tell everyone that I coach that's training for a marathon that from three weeks to go until about six weeks to go is sort of the most important period of the marathon training. And this is right in the middle of that. So we've now got 28 days until 35 days to go. So we finished off last week with the 35K run along Moyben Road with Eric, where I knew I probably went a little bit too hard. Um, woke up the next day and went for a 6K easy jog and I was really surprised in this jog because I didn't uh, take any notice of the pace until towards the end of the run. And in a recovery jog, pace isn't super relevant, but I was thinking I was going around 4.45 per K or around 7.35, 7.40 per mile. But I was pretty surprised to look at my watch to see 5.22 per K at the end. So very clearly, very tired uh, for the long run. So it was just a 32 minute jog on the Monday. On the Tuesday, it felt a lot better as I normally do 48 hours post-workout here. Ran with a British athlete up here called Callum. We did 19.2K at 4.55 per K. That was the morning run in an hour 34. Very hilly run. I mean, if you look at this Strava um, data, it's 279 meters of elevation gain in just under 20K. So that's almost the elevation gain of Boston Marathon in a race half the in a run, sorry, half the distance. Um, so yeah all the runs out here that are the aerobic easy runs. The paces are way slower as I've shared in previous videos because for the most part, not only because of the altitude, but also because you're just doing so much climbing. In the afternoon was an easy uh, 5.9K run with Reem at 5.29 per K pace, just down to the Camerini track and back. And then Wednesday morning was definitely the hardest day of the week for me. Yeah, a couple of yeah. This is basically breakfast these days. <laughs> Getting so tired that I um, wake up so close to the workout. I don't have time to really eat anything, so I just have, I have a gel. Caffeine too, so it's sort of like breakfast and coffee in one. Yeah, looking forward to doing some um, some faster work today. Uh, weather's perfect, as always. I would say 3.20 is probably a good move for the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Just because the second half of it is going to be a bit of a, a little bit of a time. Three, two, one, go. Yep. So we had a training session that was two by 3K, three by 1500 and four by 500. So Eric, who I wanted to join for at least part of this workout was doing four by 3K at his half marathon effort. I really wanted to do something in this week that was a little bit faster than half marathon effort. So I thought I'll do the first two 3Ks with him and then I'll drop down to do some faster intervals after that. So I made up the workout of two by 3K, three by 1500, so the two by 3K at half marathon effort, three by 1500 at 10K effort, and then four by 5K at about 5K effort. Now, I suggested a loop that I'd only been to once before quite some time ago that I thought was relatively flat. Now, it was flat for Kenya, but it still was very challenging. The first time I come here and my last time to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to apologize to everyone about the 
The flat loop. <laughs> <laughs> that was not fun. <laughs> and the reason why it was really challenging for us is because there was a 3K climb up one side of the loop and about a 3.5K downhill uh, segment on the other side of the loop, which made any time we were going up the uphill loop just such a long, grinding uh, effort. It's a strange feeling, man. It's quite depressing, isn't it? Because you're looking at the splits that you're running. So just finish it, don't find out about it. <laughs> yeah, but you can't finish yeah. it because you're looking at your watch and you're like, there's no way I can run this for three games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's like, there's no way. So I did this workout relatively poorly, in my opinion, as in I paced it poorly, but I am really proud of myself that I got through it because there were definitely periods throughout that workout that I thought that I would not finish. So two by 3K, we went up the hill for the first one at 3.22 per K. Uh, the second one was at 3.13 per K down the hill. And then as you can see in the splits, the rest of them were sort of all over the place. The 1.5 Ks were between 3.13 and 3.26 per K, depending on if we were going uphill or downhill. I was hoping for these to be closer to three minutes to 3.05 per K, assuming it was flat, but it wasn't. And I definitely redlined in the first two 3 Ks and made the rest of the workout really hard. Uh, the recovery, sorry, was 500 meters jog. Uh, but when we got down to the uh, 500 meter reps, I was sort of trying to hit just under three minute K pace. And I was sort of between 257 and, well, one was 311, that it was slightly uphill. But yeah, I mentioned on the Strava log that I was uh, not overly stoked about this workout, but I am glad I finished it because I think I was, um, after the second 1500 meter rep, I was really considering um, stopping and just doing uh, like a tempo effort to the end because I was really struggling with the paces, but got through to the end and uh, yeah, definitely didn't learn my lesson from <laughs> last Sunday's long run where if you push the hills too early in a workout here, you can find that the rest of the workout really hard, which I did uh, on Wednesday. We've got to stop complaining about the hills. Mm. Well, I have to stop complaining. But that was a struggle. The next day, I did an 8.5K jog in the morning at 4.46 per K, just 40 minutes. I mentioned on Strava that I was toast. I was very tired. Felt a little bit better in the afternoon. I do remember that day eating a lot uh, because I felt like I was really uh, energy deficient in the morning. So I had a lot of food that day. And I also drank a lot of the precision fuel and hydration carb mix, which I think really helped for the afternoon run. I did 11.6K with Jack, Eric, and Kieran at 4.44 per K. And I remember thinking to myself, I felt way better in the afternoon than in the morning. On the Friday morning, 14.3K at 4.24 per K, just over an hour, just on my own, preparing for the following uh, day's run. In the evening, I did 10.1K run at 4.43 per K. So a solid sort of 24.5K worth of easy running that day. That takes us to the Saturday which is four weeks and a day before Berlin Marathon, where I did my longest run of the block. Hello friends, we just started 40K in the dark. 40K, where I ran from home down to Moy Ben Road, which is about 15 and a half K, uh, losing about 150 to 170 meters of elevation gain on the way down. Now over 15 K, you do notice that, but it's, there are some uphills and some downhills on the way, but the overall net loss is about 170, I think it's 165, 170 meters. And then I joined the, some of the other guys, Jack and Eric down at Moy Ben as they were doing their 20 K tempo run. There's definitely a few, what's my doing thoughts? In that first 10k, solo in the dark down the road, just like wow. So we just straight shot 340s. Three, two. Oh wait, 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 wait. One. Let's go. Eric was doing a run where he was trying to do 20k at about 325 to 330 pace. I thought I could probably hop in with him and try and do that, but I knew if I did, I would be completely cooked at the end of it. I thought. In a 40K run, do I really want to do that? I typically have done my 40K runs at sort of 80 to 85% effort uh, and not really hit marathon effort in the 40K runs, in the super long ones. I tend to hit, do the marathon efforts in the sort of 30 to 35K long runs. So instead I ran with Jack, who's aiming for a sub 230 marathon at Berlin and we ran our 20K effort at 3.39 per K. The goal was 3.40. And yeah, I think I did really well on this run because I fueled very well. 
I was lucky to have um, some help with that uh, from the cars. And I took in gels and precision fuel and hydration drink mix every 5K. And honestly, at the end of the 40K, so after the 20K at a four and a half K cooldown to make it 40, I didn't feel like I was completely depleted. Probably could have kept going for another 5K if required. But overall, 30, uh, 40K at a 344 per K average. So right around the six minute mile mark. And was really happy with that because I think um, it would have been a Definitely would have been a mistake for me to have run with Eric and to really redline myself that day, especially after Wednesdays being so hard. And like I said, I think it's always uh, a good idea in the longest run of the block for it to just be making sure that you do the distance and not necessarily for it to be really high intensity and really completely draining the batteries as well. So I avoided that. And uh, yeah, overall, 140K a week. I took the Sunday off. 140K a week, 87 miles, I think that is. Um, now strung together four weeks of sort of between 130 and 140 K, which I think is right around the right sort of mileage for me. And yeah, only really sort of two and a half weeks of hard work to go before the taper starts, which uh, I'm already getting uh, pretty excited for.